So my research is uh, based on the idea that we can find ways to slow down diseases of aging, and maybe even aging itself. And uh, when I started doing this about 15 years ago, uh, this was considered a crazy idea to find genes that actually control the aging process. Uh, but actually now we know there are genes in our bodies. There are seven of them that we work on called sirtuins. And these genes we think control the body's natural defenses against diseases and aging itself. And so the overall theme of my lab's research over at Harvard Medical School is to find ways to tap into our body's natural defenses and turn on these genes that, uh, that exist in our cells uh, but they typically don't do a very good job and so we're trying to make medicines that will turn on these pathways, these very ancient pathways, and boost them in a way that will slow down diseases. And when I say diseases, that includes essentially all of the major diseases of Western society, of de the developed world. So there's cancer and heart disease, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, heart disease. And what we're finding in the lab by tweaking these sirtuin genes and even some of the drugs that we have in clinical trials, they're able to uh, slow down not just one of these diseases, but actually slow down all of them uh, and even reverse some of them. And so the future that I hope to see if this research comes to bear, and I, I really think that it'll, it'll happen in, in our lifetimes, uh, is that a patient could go to their doctor and let's say they have high blood sugar, they have type 2 diabetes, and the doctor will say, well, we have this medicine. Uh, it's a breakthrough medicine, brand new on the market, and it'll, it'll bring down your blood sugar. And that, you know, the patient says, that's great news. And the doctor says, well, I have to warn you, there are some side effects to this drug. Some of the side effects include, you'll be protected against cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's and osteoporosis. And by the way, your memory will improve. Now that, that sounds like science fiction, but actually we do this all the time in the lab with animals. We can make mice smarter, run twice as far, protected from all those diseases. Um, and we haven't found any side effects yet that are negative. So we could have medicines that simultaneously protect the elderly or even the middle-aged person from some of the diseases that, that, that kill people. And, and the future, I think, is really bright. You, you can imagine a future where a 90-year-old is just as healthy as a 50-year-old and still plays tennis. And maybe we see people reaching their hundreds when uh, they can uh, see their great-grandkids graduate from uni. So th this is the future that I hope to see. When I started this work, uh, it, was, it was considered crazy to consider that you might find one gene or one drug that could really have a big impact on aging. And that was because we used to think of our bodies like cars that would wear out, break down. And uh, we, we used to think of our bodies just like machines. And actually medicine is practiced that way still. But we actually have gone through a, a paradigm shift in thinking about aging and our bodies. And what we now realize is that our bodies are far more complicated um, and intelligent uh, compared to a car. So for example, when uh, a car gets damaged or rusts um, or something breaks, the car doesn't fix itself. Um, and in fact, if, if you fix the exhaust pipe, it doesn't mean that the scratch or the dent in the body will be fixed. But our bodies are different. When we're damaged, when we're under stress, when we don't get enough food, we actually we seek out food. Our bodies repair the damage. Um, and what we found out is these processes are not separate. There are these master, master regulators of defenses against disease. And some of these are the sirtuin genes that I work on. And so when we tweak the SIRT1 gene, which is one of these sirtuins, it doesn't just keep the paint shiny and new or repair the exhaust pipe. It fixes everything and makes the whole body more robust and fitter. And that's why we think we're seeing these simultaneous protection against uh, heart disease and cancer and Alzheimer's. And it's not miraculous, it's just uh, a new way of thinking about aging um, and realizing that we have inbuilt defenses against disease and we just need to turn them on. When I left Australia, I went to work as a postdoctoral researcher at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, with uh, an amazing man, he, he's uh, still a good friend, uh, Leonard Garenti. And, uh, we and others in the lab were trying to understand why do yeast cells, baker's yeast, brewer's yeast, grow old? And if we could understand why they grow old and die, maybe we could find genes that control that process. And again, this was a crazy idea. How could yeast tell us anything about human aging? You know, we get heart disease and cancer and yeast cells, they're just a single microscopic cell. But nevertheless, I, I thought that at least we should start 
with something simple. Because if we can't figure it out for yeast, we have no hope of figuring it out for humans. And so what we did was we, we did find a cause of aging in yeast. Um, turns out their chromosomes get tangled and tend to, uh, to choke the cell. Um, and then there was a gene that was discovered that it slowed down this process called SIR2. And that's what gave the name to this whole class of genes called sir 2 And we actually have seven of those in our body and they seem to protect different organs um, from diseases. Starting in 2003, uh, I've been working to find and, uh, and progress to the clinic molecules that can actually turn on these sirtuin defenses in our body. And we've gone initially from extending lifespan in yeast cells through to little nematode worms and fruit flies. Uh, we've done this in obese mice. Uh, we have some early interesting results even on lean mice that they might be living longer but they're certainly healthier um, and actually now these molecules have been um, worked on by hundreds of people they've been improved in their potency and safety uh, many fold and they're in human studies right now uh, in Europe um, and in the UK for different diseases of aging uh, like uh, for example type 2 diabetes or uh, inflammation uh, like arthritis and uh, inflammation of the bowel. So these are areas that are either in progress or uh, in future will be uh, tested in the clinic. Now often people ask me what's the latest, are they working? Well it's too early to divulge uh, but I can say that the molecules have proven surprisingly safe so far in over a hundred people and it's still early days in terms of drug development but over the next few years we'll certainly know if, if it's going to be sooner or later that we can achieve this goal of having medicines that work on multiple diseases. And uh, it's a big effort, it's, it's gone way beyond my single laboratory now. There's uh, tens of millions of dollars being spent each year on these trials. And uh, so we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, drug development is risky of course, there's no guarantee. Especially something as challenging as combating diseases of aging. Uh, but I'm optimistic, the science is, is solid. The field of aging is now at the forefront of biology. And uh, if I'm not successful and these drugs don't end up on the market, I think someone will have a breakthrough. Um, we've had the paradigm shift, we know it's possible. Uh, it's just a matter of time that we'll have these remarkable drugs uh, to treat the elderly and the sick. Often this sounds too good to be true, that this might be the, the fountain of youth. And I don't like that to say that because uh, people have tried for thousands of years to do this um, and again I have to be frank I don't know if, if this is going to be successful but I do know that it will be possible one day it may be in the next few years maybe it's another few decades I don't know but we've certainly turned a corner and I think that the the future of humanity looks bright if we can have medicines like this I think dying in your 60s or being frail in your 80s may be a thing of the past and I hope to see that in, in my lifetime, if not just help our kids. Um, but I think that medicine has a bright future and um, I'm really excited to be part of it.